What's going on everybody, Quaker here, bringing you a, another video. Today we look at an application that I've been pretty much avoiding covering for the entire year or so that I've been doing this channel. And uh, this application is Windows Terminal, as you saw in the title. There's a new preview out there now. It is version 1.9. It's separate download from the stable version, which is version 1.8, which you pretty much all get if you don't already have it. If you're on the latest Windows Insider builds, um, again, you don't need Windows Insider builds to get the preview version. You can just go to the Microsoft Store and download it anytime. So it brings it up to version 1.9 and some of the changes that it brings is some just some simple changes. And the first one is uh, now you can make it pretty much the default terminal application or the default command style application for all of your command style applications such as Azure Cloud Shell, uh, Windows PowerShell, PowerShell and command prompt. Um, it's a very simple and straightforward thing to to do that. And I'll show you that later on in the video. Uh, going deeper in as well, we can also do see that now command prompt is now typed out throughout the entire application. Now this is changeable in the old version, version 1.8 that most people have. Um, but here by default, as soon as you install command prompt is typed out. If you make a new tab, you see it right there or control shift two, you see command prompt is fully typed out. Whereas before it was just CMD, which, you know, is. I guess if they have space to type it out, it's better to do it that way. Uh, the next thing you do have is auto detecting URLs to make and making them clickable when you're typing out URLs or you're seeing URLs in your lines. So if you just scroll down under the interaction tab, you scroll down all the way, you see automatically detect URLs and make them clickable. This is off by default. I turned it on because it's just it's like, why not? Why wouldn't you have this activated? And you just hit save to keep that thing in line and there. Another thing that you also have is, again, when I was saying the default terminal app, what you would do is you would go to the startup tab right here. And this is a new section here, default terminal application. By default, it is Windows console host, which is pretty much command line uh, or command prompt. And you just change it simply over to Windows terminal preview and that's it. Hit save. And now anytime you open up PowerShell, Azure Cloud Shell, command prompt, uh, Ubuntu, all that stuff, you'll just boot into Windows Terminal, which is pretty straightforward. And honestly, it looks better. You can customize it more and so on. The next thing you can have is editable actions and shortcuts without opening up the JSON files. And basically all this is you go to the actions tab right below here. And then you see here that you can highlight any of these close pane or whatever it is. And you see right next to this little pencil icon. If you click that, you can customize and pick whichever shortcut, uh, key shortcut, you want without having to open the JSON file by difference is all you would do. If you see, if you have the normal windows terminal, which is the version 1.8, the difference is in version 1.8, it tells you that you need to open up the JSON file and then you can't actually edit it directly in the application. So it just makes, it brings the user interface more forward to the front and it's, it's all good to me. Next thing we have is appearance previews. Uh, without changing or saving your changes for your appearance. And basically what that means is when you go into the profile section, uh, normally in the old PowerShell version 1.8, or not PowerShell, uh, Windows Terminal version 1.8, when you click on say Windows PowerShell and you go to appearance, you kind of have to guess like what your thing is gonna look like. You can't really tell right off the bat, but in the new version 1.9, all you would do is when you say you select under your profiles, Windows PowerShell, and you hit appearance, you see this little window pop up here. And this shows you a preview of what your what changes you're making in terms of your appearance on the fly. So if I want one half dark, click it, you see that it brightened up a little bit. If I want tango light, you see that it brightened up a little bit. Um, if I want Campbell PowerShell, you see it's kind of more blue. Campbell is black and white and so on like that. And PowerShell typically is, you know, the blue color scheme. So you might want that if you want. And there's a bunch of other things that you can do there. You can change your background image and so on there and see the changes without doing it. You can even change it to your desktop wallpaper. And you see just like that, I changed it and it is the same wallpaper as my desktop. I can see that and I can discard changes so that it doesn't apply to it right away. It's pretty nice. It's pretty straightforward, but it, and it works. And then it also says here we have more bell notification styles are now selectable. 
So basically what that means is when we go to advanced settings here under either PowerShell, Command Prompt, or so on, any of these profiles, if you scroll down all the way to the bottom, it says bell notification style. Now, for one, the because they're multi-selectable, uh, you can now select uh, whether you want audible, which controls what happens when the application emits a BEL character and so on. You can change and you can add all three of them at the same time or you can turn them all off. By default in the version 1.8, if you go to advanced and you scroll down, you don't have all those options. You just can only select one. You can choose it to flash and flash your taskbar and so on or all or none or just audible. Now you have more kind of flexibility in terms of bell notification style. And now the last thing too is profiles are duplicatable easily. And now what I mean by that is simple. All it is is you hit, say you're adding a new profile. And now you see here, you can say, I want to duplicate my PowerShell profile, or I want to duplicate my command prompt and so on profile, this custom profile that I made. And it'll take those properties of that profile automatically and just create a new one and you can tweak it on the fly if you want. Uh, why you'd want to do that, you guys can tell me, but that's how it is. Now, if you want to get to the old add new profile screen that the old version 1.8 has, all you would do is hit new empty profile and it pretty much brings you right back to where uh, version 1.8 shows you the same screen as what 1.8 shows you. So for example, if I click that, you see that right by default, if I add new profile, it just keeps adding them by default real quick and it shows you right there. Duplicating is a little extra step. You got to browse and look for all the stuff. So yeah, that's about it in a nutshell. That is all the changes in Windows Terminal Preview version 1.9 and hopefully most of those things will be coming to the stable version soon after the testing has been done with it for people using it. Uh, let me know what you guys think in the comment section below about the changes. I'll catch you guys later.